Hi everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia Toot here and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to my interview with Camille Perriot. Hello. Hi Alicia. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for getting back to me, for hopping on here. I'm super psyched to have you on. So I know right now things are really hectic, really crazy. So how are you and your family holding up with everything that's going on at the moment? We're doing pretty good. Uh, my husband and I, Chris, we own a gym out here in Santa Cruz, California called Santa Cruz Power Fitness. So we've been rolling through the closures, a reopening and then a closure again. So just learning how to pivot. We've created an outdoor gym for our members and um, it's been challenging, but we're getting through. It's been a lot of ups and downs, hasn't it? Especially up here even. It's like they're about to go into a different phase and then they completely stop everything. So I can only imagine being a gym owner down there, kind of like a roller coaster. It is, it is. It's it's an emotional roller coaster. I, everyone, Everyone's going through it to some degree. Well, to fight boredom during this pandemic and quarantine, a lot of people have taken up baking or others are simply binge watching tons of television. So have you found yourself doing anything different or anything new? Well, um, I think we have watched almost, almost every series on Netflix, Amazon, everything. <laughs> and now we're like, just wait, like we're all waiting now, like one, two years for the next season to come out. Um, we've been, we've been working a lot, to be honest, we've been working a lot. So we've been keeping ourselves very busy. Um, but, and I also have a daughter. So my daughter is during, from March, we were doing homeschooling on top of everything else. So it's been a juggling act. We definitely, but we definitely did some, some massive TV viewing. <laughs> I like how you mentioned TV because it's been really fun seeing yourself and, uh, you know, just appearing on TV over there because, you know, the uh, gym has been featured. So that's been really cool to see come up and, you know, following you on Instagram and stuff. So yeah. I guess the other thing I wanted, I wanted to ask on the TV front is has there been like that one show that you guys just got super, super into and like you just couldn't stop watching episode after episode? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Oh, there's a couple that came to my mind. Oh man, I'm blanking on them. That's really sad. Oh, one I just I just finished was crazy. Was um, the Handmaid's Tale? Okay, my sister and mom watched that, but I have not got on the train yet. I hear Ooh. it's so well worth it though. It's intense. That's a really, really, really good one. That and the Money Heist. It's like a Spanish series, um, but it's it's uh they kind of like voice over in english and that's really good too but there's a lot of great shows out there we normally don't watch as much tv right that's the thing like usually i'd be traveling on weekends but i've been home every weekend since march which is so different to get used to but yeah i've watched way too much television like i kind of feel guilty about it but at the same time i think to myself no this is the time to take that slight breather you know <laughs> I think it's, 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 it's made everybody kind of set, like step back a little bit from their busy schedules and their the daily grind and, uh, you know, spend more time at home and it forces you to slow down, which part of that, you know, for that reason, I, it's, there's some good that's come out of it as well. And these times can obviously really take a toll on people and something that you've shared is how the upcoming Olympia this year has really given you a reason to kind of get out of bed and not be complacent and just keep at it. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about that and just how the Olympia in that sense has been inspiring you. So I qualified for the 2020 Olympia um, three weeks before the last Olympia so to, in 2019. So I've been like qualified for some time now, but um, yeah, it's definitely helped prevent me from maybe completely falling off the wagon and just, you know, during quarantine when we're all baking and wanting to snack, a little part of my head is kind of like, I have a big show way down the road, you know, keep it in line. Um, but especially during times when it's like, we call it patches, those like emotional roller coasters. There's like, you know, there's really great days and then there's really like, like kind of down days. And the Olympia and that having that some, something to look forward to and to keep me focused and have that goal has definitely helped um, pull me through a lot, of, a lot of these days. Just speaking to competition, you of course began competing in 2013 and you earned your IFBB Pro card um, shortly afterwards for your third show, which is super, super impressive. So have you always been 
like I, when I came across, I was like, that's amazing. So have you always been super driven and competitive or did something kind of happen that made you that way? So I was never really into, I mean, I played competitive sports growing up. Um, I swam in college for our college team and I've always played sports, but um, so I, I had the fitness background. I think a lot of people look at um, athletes who are in bodybuilding, um, especially when we, you know, we're building, it takes time to build muscle and to sculpt your physique. But I think people who have a fitness background, they've already been working on it for years. And when I decided to do a competition, I had already been, you know, training, not, not officially for all those years, but I had already been building those layers. So by the time I got my, you know, I did my first show, and the third show by winning my pro card, um, I was I was right there with um, everybody else. And I heard that it kind of just fell into your lap as far as bodybuilding goes. Like you're almost told like, hey, we really think you could excel at this, so why not try it? It wasn't really something you were overly familiar with. So I imagine that kind of the conditioning and getting used to certain aspects, since it is fairly strict in certain ways, like did that kind of take a minute to get used to or you're kind of already ready to go? So, yeah, I, I, I didn't even know what the sport was. I, I mean, I would see the magazines and I would see the fitness models and I would think like, wow, they look amazing. I could never look like that. I didn't even know how it was achievable. Um, and then a friend at the time was like, you know, you should try out for a bodybuilding. Like, you should try to do bikini. And I saw what they looked like. I was like, there's no way I could walk out on stage in a bikini. I was also a mom at this point and I was a dental hygienist. So it was... I was living in a different world and one day I was in the gym and I was like working out. I'm like, you know what? It'd be really fun to have like a goal that's really intimidating to me and try it out. Why not? And I loved it. It was just so much fun. And I think that's why I've been doing it for so long. Um, I've been competing since 2013 and I, even though it's not for me, it's not about the placings or any of that. It's just a lot of fun to, have a goal in your fitness journey. You meet incredible people, you travel. Um, it's opened up so many doors for me in my life that I never would have imagined. I mean, I, I used to be a dental hygienist and now I, my husband and I own a, a gym and we're completely embedded in the fitness industry. We've coached thousands of athletes across the world. We've had, so we are, my whole life has kind of shifted, but it, it's fun. It's like, it's what I love to do. You really do seem like you're enjoying everything step by step, which is so awesome to see. We're kind of talking about this before we started recording, but like when you have a passion, you can just make it your job. It doesn't feel like a job anymore. So I'm really happy that I kind of all just fell into your lap, but you stuck with it and obviously made something incredible out of it. Yeah, I, I've, I've, it's been an amazing journey and it, it teaches you a lot about yourself. Um, you overcome fears. You, you do, you, you put yourself through, um, like the, it just the 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 mental game, the the physical challenges, everything about it. You you come out and you're just like you. It, it's very it can be very inspiring. Well, it's on a little side note, you had mentioned her really briefly earlier, but I did want to say how your daughter Lola is just so adorable, and I like seeing you two <laughs> together. It's like a little mini you having fun. Um, so what are her thoughts on her mom not only being like a total badass babe and in the spotlight, um, but just her thoughts on like what you're doing and seeing you out there in that sense? Because it is kind of different than what a lot of you know other people moms do. Yeah. yeah. So it's funny because Lola's been, Lola was like two or three when I started to get into um, the sport. Maybe she's like three. And um, I, the past year I've been talking about retiring actually, just because it's, I'm like, you know, I've had an amazing run. I'm going to be competing at this year's Olympia. This is my fourth Olympia. And it's, I, I feel like it's time for me. I'm also, I'm 41 now and I could keep going, but I, I want to end on a high note and I want to, start the next chapter in my life. And I told my daughter Lola that I was going to be um, retiring from competing. And she was just like, you can't, you can't. Like she really, really likes me competing. She thinks it's exciting. And I think she's proud for a while. I was, um, I didn't bring her to shows. I don't like, if you come into my home, I don't have pictures of myself on the walls. I don't, I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's very, I keep that very separate. And I, and that's also, I don't post a whole lot of Lola on my page because I want to keep her separate. And 
um, but she 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 respects it. She she's very proud, and she yeah, so she she approves. <laughs> That's adorable. It's like you never really know how people are going to react because, like we said, like I don't want to say it's not the normal route because what I'm doing is not the normal route, you know. But um, it's so cute to know that she's proud of you and like you can kind of show her now exactly what it is that you do, and you never know uh, what footsteps might be followed in. <laughs> I oh god I know I know I think I think what it shows her and I you know I, I was very cautious about not wanting to give her a negative uh, you know portrayal of a woman's body or how a woman's body should look which is why I've kept it very separate and she the way she views it it as is like my mom works really hard um, yeah. she tries really hard and she sees it as like a competition she's very competitive herself so she. She approves. <laughs> runs in the family. Definitely runs in the family. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much for hopping on here and taking the time to have a chat, Camille. It was absolutely lovely having you on the show. Thank you, Alicia. And I wish you the best with your podcast and channel and everything else. Thank you so much. Everyone watching, a big shout out to Camille for joining today. And don't forget to, of course, check her out at the Olympia later this year and visit aliciatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features. We'll see you next time, everyone.